Hey Tech Nitwit family, we got another installment of the TP01. I did talk about the unboxing and how the TP01 and TG01 are pretty much the same PCs. So everything I do in this video is going to work in both of them. But let's go over what I'm going to do in this video. You're probably like, what you up to Tech Nitwit? Well, we're going to stick a 3090 in this TP01-1114. I know I said the number. I could have just put it in a graphic down below, but I'm crazy like that sometimes. We got ourselves a 1000 watt power supply, an MATX test bench, and a bunch of PCI riser cables. Um, that's pretty much this video, and we're going to do some benchmarks, see if the riser cables affect FPS, and uh, see if we can actually game with the GPU outside of the, the case. Um, I'm sure other people have answered this. If you're wondering what a riser cable is, I will show you and stick with the video. It's uh, one of these guys, and we're going to be putting this guy together and getting it uh, smoking and rolling. It's going to be one bad mamma jam of a computer once we're done with it. Hey guys, we're back here. I got the set reconfigured, moved some stuff around, but I'm just going to go over the items we have here. Um, all the items that are shown here, uh, other than the stuff that's used like this power supply and the GPU, I'm going to have links in the description down below. So uh, the project total cost was about $225. That includes the adapter, the 24 pin adapter, LED, red LED light to turn the PSU on and off. That includes two, ri uh, one riser cable and one extender cable. Uh, the difference between these is pretty much this has a board that you know, can go to a standoff. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this has a board that can, that can go to a standoff and you can screw it down. And then, you know, of course, extends the PCI E, you know, riser. And then of course we have the big bad mamma jamma, the 600 millimeter thermal take. That's a 240 millimeter uh, ASUS. All right, guys, there are other options for mounting the PSU and GPU. I would personally like something that I could like mount the GPU and PSU uh, right on top of each other, but where the fans, you know, don't complicate and stuff like that. So uh, this thermal take cable is a monster. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is gi frickin enormous. And I mean, it is super flexible. This is what's going to allow us to do this video today. This is pretty much going to, you know, this is what connects on the outside. And this is what connects on the inside of the PC. So pretty much it's going to do, if I can get it to do it, it's going to do something like that and come out of the PC, and then out the back, and then to our GPU. But uh, one thing, you don't have to buy the exact cables that I have here. You can go and buy you know, other brands. Just be aware that you want shielded cables if you do this. So this is a 600 millimeter, and that's a 240. You could technically get away with it with the 600, but it's going to be very tight. Um, one other thing I do want to say before I jump into this, the series of how you're going to turn things on. So once you have your GPU mounted in this test bench, you're going to want to make sure that this power supply is turned on before you turn this PC on. It's going to be very important. So let's go ahead and if you guys want me to go over the actual building of this test bench, I can. Um, it's nothing special. It's just, uh, you know, some plexiglass and some standoff screws. You will have to keep this loose and move these around to get your GPU uh, riser card to be aligned. And you'll see when I install that. So the GPU riser card is going to go in like that. Two regular uh, case screws or mounting screws for like your motherboard. And uh, let's go ahead and install that guy really quick. All right, the rig we were going to use today, guys, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, is a DIY Mini MATX motherboard test bench, which was around $58 hairs. Uh, the power supply we're going to be using today is a 1000 watt Smart M1000W. I don't think Thermaltake even makes these anymore. So uh, the best closest thing that's going to be closest to this is going to be like the Tough Power, and I think they run about 215, 216 on sale. Uh, this is an MATX test bench, but of course we're not putting an MATX motherboard in here. We're going to be putting a riser board in here. So let me go ahead and move some stuff around on the set. And we got our vice chair director, Meow Meow, Shayla, on the set here. What's up, Meow Meow? So these are two normal uh, motherboard screws that you use. They're just uh, normal Phillips, so we're going to get a number two Phillips. And get this off. What's up, Meow Meow? Hi, B. You gonna say hi to the Tech Knitwit family? You gonna help Dad build some stuff? Huh? Oh, I know. You're such a sweet girl. You're such a sweet girl. So Shayla, my little uh, investigator, has to check everything out. If it is new, she has her face in it. You gonna help Dad put some screws in? Hmm? Yeah? Or are you just going to be an observer? 
You're good at that. So you're going to go ahead and put these two screws in. And uh, hopefully Ms. Shayla gets off the table so you guys can see what I'm doing. Good girl. Um, so pretty much there's just two standoffs that are in here. They're in little rods that secure down into this uh, prototyping board. The next thing I'm going to do is I got a three foot piece of Velcro. And I, this is just for my own peace of mind, but it also keeps these cables wrapped up. So actually I'm going to go ahead and get the Comscope uh, 24 pin uh, ATX red LED power on off uh, doohickey. And we are going to snap this in here. And it just snaps like that. And this is going to allow you to turn this power supply on and off. When it's on, this red light lights up. When it's off, this red light is off. So we don't want these cables flopping around. And we want to do something with these. And we want to make them kind of nice and neat. But I'm just grabbing some Velcro and getting it around here. Just make this nice and neat. Uh, if you get a, a semi-modular power supply, of course, you can get rid of a couple of these cables. But the 24 pin is going to be there no matter what. So you're going to have a fat cable that you're going to have to do something with. Of course, we don't want it over the fan because we want the power supply to be nice and good. And then pull it nice and tight. Release some of the, the Velcro. And this will hold it. Darn, Velcro is too, too uh, sticky. Doesn't want to let Tech Knit would uh, do his job. So just Velcro that guy in there. And that's good. You could do some hot glue or some zip ties. Um, and that's what it looks like from the rear. And then you got your switch for your on and on, on, on and on, on and off. Yeah, on and on, Tech Knit, it's on all the time. And uh, that's pretty much the test bench is ready to go. I'm not going to put the graphics card in until we get the PCI riser cable attached into the inside of here and out. Um, the quality of this thing is, the metal is really nice, but this plexiglass I'm not too happy about. So just be aware if you're like, oh, Tech Knit, how are you going to run you know, a computer with two power supplies? Is that going to mess things up? Well, the only thing that's actually connected to our computer is this PCI bus lane. It does not care where the, the, the graphics card gets its power from. It's just, it's like, hey, you're on, you're, I can talk to you, I'm ready to go. Um, and some other questions or concerns people might have is like, hey, that's a really long PCI bus cable. Is that going to affect, you know, performance or uh, FPS? Well, all the testing I've done so far, I have not seen any negative um, consequences to this actual PCI riser cable. I've actually seen more negative consequences to ha only having an i5 with a 3090 versus an i7 or i9 or even a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 um, versus the i5. Now let's come to the rear. We're going to need a T15 Torx head. And we're going to take the side panel off. And it's, as, it's easy peasy like that. And of course our cages aren't in here because we got this ginormous bad mamma jam of a huge heat sink cooler in here. She is a beast. First thing we're going to do is feed this cable in from the rear. So we want it like that. Honestly I'm going to come in the lowest one because it doesn't need to be up there. And up and in. And this cable is super flexible, which is really cool. Um, I know that these are a little bit harder to get in than cards, so I get the front in and then I snap it in. So at this point, we're done inside this case, unless you're going to put your hard drive back in there, but I'm just going to put the side panel back on quick. I think the hardest part of this build was actually building this goofy uh, test rig rack thing. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is the MATX bench will work with any style uh, ATX power supply. So let's go ahead and flip this guy around. So this back side right here that has this clicky thing, this lock, is actually going to grab this portion of the cable. So what I found is it's good to kind of get this front in, you know, and then bring it kind of level. And it's actually kind of hard to get these together. You got to kind of grab both sides. There we go, they're together, and then it's locked. And that's the cable pretty much done. I mean, you could secure it to the pest bench, but I mean, quite honestly, um, as long as none of these pins touch anything, you're good. You could take some non-conductive tape. And now we are going to go ahead and install our beautiful, big, black, bad mamma jamma of a graphics card on. Yay! And this is pretty much, you line these guys up in the front. All right, guys, go ahead and lock your GPU in, get the screws in. I might go and look up the nuts that actually go on here because the threads aren't the best on this and there are some threads protruding. And go ahead and snug that down. And just be careful not to over snug it because it's plexiglass. You don't want it to snap. And that's pretty much in there. It's locked down. 
I might, and, and this is the reason I was thinking about a different rig than this, is because I would like this to be supported a little bit more. But if my cat jumped up here and sniffed this thing, you know, of course these fans are right here. She might hit her nose, but really she stays away from stuff that makes loud humming noises anyways. So I think we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in. If it, uh, the connector allows me to. There we go. That's number one. And number two. So you can either leave, leave it in this position like it is right here, or you can turn it, and it will allow you to keep it like that. I know it's a lot of desk space, and you're like, gosh, God, that really sucks. You could technically move this whole supply and this guy all the way to the edge if you wanted to. Um, you'd have to modify you know, this guy, but this would slide over here, and you could slide this over and compact it down and actually cut these. And you could probably get it into a space about this, because this is pretty, if you look in here, guys, if you look at that, that's pretty compact. Like, you know, you get the cut power supply pretty uh, close. You can also flip the power supply over so this fan is on that side. I mean, you have a lot of options here. So things are uh, pretty forgiving. But, uh, yeah, guys, we're going to go ahead and get everything plugged in, and we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. So I am going to swing this to the side just because of my cable links on my set and leave it like that. But we're going to go ahead and plug in our HDMI. And this rod's actually kind of in, in the way because this cable is so fat. I know it kind of looks hodgepodge. I wouldn't go with a big end like this. This is kind of a rarity. This end is ginormous. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to plug in the power and Ethernet into the back of our PC. We will no longer use any of the ports on the back for GP, GPU stuff or monitors. So the HDMI or VGA that are back here, guys, so these two that are back here no longer will be used for anything. So if you hit, you know, just uh, FYI. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in our second power supply. And we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. One thing I, I know I mentioned it before, you want to really make sure is that this guy right here is on before we ever turn this bad mamma jamma of a computer on. Uh, power supplies, you can find seven to thousand watt for, well, I won't say a thousand watt, anything from like 500 to 750 for about 60 to 80 bucks. Um, in total, it was about six different stress tests that I ran and four different benchmarks. I did DirectX 12, DirectX 11, Firestrike, Time Spy, and Port Royal. They didn't have any issues. I didn't get any overheating. And actually having the GPU out in the open air was awesome. I might figure out a way to mount the fan in the front to push some air on this back plate because it does, does get kind of warm. Um, but other than that, uh, I was really surprised that the FPS wasn't affected by how long we were extending this PCIe uh, out. So guys, the reason we are doing this video is just to allow us to use any bad mamma jamma of a black graphics card we want to. Uh, just uh, one other thing, the screws used in this mounting, the ones that we mounted down here were M3X5 to the riser boards. That's the type of screw that went in there. I just couldn't remember it when we first did it. All right, guys, we're going to get everything uh, turned on and let's hit this power button. We're going to first make sure that this red light is lit up. That means our GPU has power, and then this how our rig is uh, powered up, and then we can hit our power button on here. All right, guys, we're going to get this booted up. It's as simple as hitting that power button, just like I said. But anyways, we're going to get some uh, benchmarks to kind of do a proof of concept to show you that it will actually work with gaming. Hey, guys, we got uh, our benchmark software up and running, and we're going to run a time spy just to kind of prove the concept that this long extension cable will work. And I'll probably time lapse this for you guys, so... Go ahead and enjoy. Real quick, I'm going to pop you guys out of the benchmark and let's see what the temperature on these cables are. We run about 32 Celsius. Back to the benchmark, y'all.
All right, guys, let's go over the FPS really quick that you could get with a 3090 in this wonderful TP01. And uh, Battlefield 5 on 1440p with the RTX 3090, you're looking at 165 frames plus. Apex Legends, 140 frames plus. GTA 5, 100 frames plus on 1440p Ultra. Fortnite, we're looking at 130 frames plus. And then, of course, Red Dead Redemption, 70, 70 frames plus. Wow. I'm sorry, but... uh. Yeah, it's usually the card that eats every GPU alive. So, um, yeah, guys, this thing is a bad mamma jamma. It is smoking hot. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better system. Yeah, it's a little bulky because of what you have to do to get, you know, a three-fan graphics card. But that's a big plus with this system, that you have the availability to put whatever graphics card you want in here. Um, it's a little bit on the costly side. You could say technically would I could spend that same amount and just do a case swap. Well, I mean you could, but say you already invested everything into this system and you got it all built up and you're like, you know, I'd rather do something like this than do a case swap. All right guys, I'm gonna do one more thing that I normally don't do. We are gonna run the Tomb Raider benchmark to see how it does and see if there's any stability problems with this. Um, I know a lot of people like to say that I'm running a synthetic benchmark, so I'd like to run something less synthetic and see where we come out. So give me a couple seconds and I'll get that configured. Hey, Tech Nightwood family, we got uh, the benchmark results are in, and I did run it with DLSS on, ray tracing shadows on Ultra. And with the RTX 3090, we it pulled some nice frames. I mean, we were pulling... A crap ton of frames. Let's look really quick right here. Our min was 81, our max was 183, our average was 112, and overall 95% was 86. So that what that 95% tells me is that our cable isn't having any problems. So our average was 84, our frames rendered was 12,307, and these are the settings that we used. All right, guys, I did run a stress test before off camera. So this also tells us the performance about, as long as I'm over 95% with my frames, anywhere between 95 and 98, it's a pass. At least in my book, it's a pass. That means you're not gonna have stuttering problems. They're pretty common. It ran 20 loops of Time Spy Extreme on 4K, and each one did about 60 frames per second. There wasn't a, a, a large variant, which means that the PCI cable is doing its job. You could game the living crap off this system. Um, I think a 3090 is a little bit overkill unless you're going to be doing editing or graphics designs, but I mean it really is what it is. If you want the latest, greatest, and best, this computer will do it. This thing is probably a, a double thumbs up bad mamma jamma. Overall, this is, uh, this is an option if you want to go this route and upgrade with a 3090, 3080, 3080 Ti, 3070 Ti if they ever come out with it, or a Super. Um, it, it's, it's an option. You, you're not stuck with that dual fan uh, configuration. This gives you the option to expand to what you want. Um, any questions, concerns, comments, throw them down in the comment section below. I try to answer everything. And yeah, this was a Tech Network Productions, and thank you guys for watching, y'all. Hey guys, it's Tech Knitwood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.